Hello and welcome to Reenact It. Uh, I'm Jesse, your host, and today we're going to be building a Viking style chair that you can bring to your LARP or reenactment. Uh, it's incredibly inexpensive. It is just your stain if you wish to stain it and your piece of wood. Mine is a 2 by 12 piece of Douglas fir that cost me $15. Like you can go up and get some fancier woods, so less knots, a little easier to work for a little bit more money, but I'm just using really cheap wood today because I'm cheap. Uh, I have here all the tools that I'll be using today. I have my measurement tools. I have a yardstick, a tape measure, a square for getting right angles, and my pencil, of course, to mark my measurements on the wood. If you're going to be doing any carving, which I did on my previous chair, uh, but I won't be doing on this chair today, you're gonna need some carving tools. I've got a couple of saws here, a skill saw for cutting my long distance on my wood and a jigsaw for cutting the hole in the center of my headpiece. I've got a couple of rotary sanders for doing my sanding. You can also use a belt sander or a sanding block to do that, but it'll take a lot longer time. Uh, I also have a drill here for getting the hole into the wood for my jigsaw to start. And then I've got Thompson water seal here to add coloring. It's a semi-transparent stain and it'll also seal the wood against the weathers. So uh, let's get started. Now that we got our wood up here, uh, we need to measure out 48 inches for the head and the tail. So we're gonna do that now. Now that our board's been cut in half, we can choose one of the sides and measure out two inches, leaving a 12 inch space at the top to be our seat in the future. You can see here the parts that I have checkered out are the pieces I'm going to be cutting off. We're going to want to measure 15 inches up from the bottom. This is going to be the top of the hole that we cut for the tail to slide through. Then we'll want to measure 2 inches from either side, and that'll be the width of our hole. Now that we have a straight line, we can make sure that our corners are nice and square. You can also do this by measuring each corner from the side of the board, and then just using your ruler between the two. I accidentally measured up from my 15 inch mark to cut my hole and you need to be measuring down two inches to cut your hole. So your hole will start at 13 inches and end at 15 inches from the base of your board. Now that we got the hole marked out that we're going to fit the tail through, we want to drill on either side with a drill bit large enough for our jigsaw blade to fit through so we can start our cutting. Now that we've finished cutting out the hole that the tongue is going to fit through, we just got to move on to the feet, which is the last functional part of our build. I'm going to be cutting out a triangle at the base of the board so that we have three feet instead of two. So I just measured out two inches from either side, which is about seven inches in total across that I'll be cutting out. And then I used my square to create a nice even triangle. And then I just used my jigsaw to cut it out from there. So now we can cut out uh, any shape you want on the head. You can leave it, you can leave it square, or you can round it, or peak it. Put some really fancy designs in there if you're good at carving. We'll see what we want to do with this one. Uh, so we'll get ready to sketch out what we want to do on the top, and then uh, and then we're gonna cut it.
So now that we've cut the head to the desired shape, we're going to move on to sanding and rounding all the corners. All right, so now that we've sanded the, uh, the head and the tail, and we've sanded it and sanded it and then sanded it some more, first I use a uh, 40 grain sandpaper to get my rough edging and the just basic shaping I want on it. And then I go over it with a 220 and then a 320 uh, grit sandpaper just to get it really smooth and have no rough edges or bits where the 40 grain is scuffed up. Uh, <clears throat> and then all we got to do is wipe this down with a damp cloth, or you can even use a dry cloth. We just want to make sure that the sawdust is, is off. We want to make sure all the sawdust has been brushed off of this. Uh, if you've got a air compressor, that works great. Just blow some air over it. Uh, and then we're just going to be using some old t-shirt pieces and our Thompson's Water Seal mahogany semi-transparent stain to stain this. I've just got an old sheet laid out over my table. That way I don't get uh, the stain if it spills any on the table directly. That way it'd be easy to remove so it doesn't seep through. So let's get started. We're gonna be pouring our stain into a disposable container. That way, if it stains the size, which it's likely to do, we can just throw it away. I first apply my stain with a brush because I can load the brush up and spread it across a large surface. And then I smooth out and spread the stain across the surface with a t-shirt or an old rag. And that's it, your chairs are done. Now you just have to wait eight to 24 hours, depending on the weather, for your stain to set. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video and I hope your Viking slash Stargazer chair came out great. Feel free to comment if you have any questions and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching.